Hello, Jack here. So, I've been working on a couple of videos for this channel, but I'm really looking forward to finishing, um, hopefully soon, but well, well, well that'll, that remains to be seen. Uh, they're mostly about the subject of passing and going stealth, but um, lately I've had a bad case of what I, I call cotton brain, <laughs> which is when I'm working on something that I'm, I'm really interested in, but it's like my brain just turns into total static and I can't finish it no matter what I do, and then I want to start over for some reason. It's horrible. I'm actually in the process of potentially getting treatment for ADHD over the next coming weeks or months, so depending on how that goes, maybe I'll be able to get this channel up and running to the uh, extent I want it to be up and running, but I'm not quite there right now mentally. Uh, but because I do want this to at least be somewhat an active channel, I'm going to make a video that is both really low brain power for me and that uh, concerns something I know a lot of people are interested in knowing about, and um, that is my handlebar mustache FAQ. Uh, it's the small collection of common questions I get um, regarding probably my most defining physical feature. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Is it real? I feel like you all can tell that this is a real mustache, but I started with this question because right now it's the number one question I get asked by coworkers during conference calls, and I find it particularly funny. Uh, the reason I get asked it so much is because I don't usually have my video camera on during calls like that. They just see my profile picture and they wonder if it's a gag. Um, I've also had it come up just a couple of times in trans spaces because there are a number of trans men who do use beard filters in their profile pictures and um, they just want to know if I'm one of them. But no, I'm not one of them. It is absolutely real. I grew it on my face using um, my own home-cooked uh, hair follicles, but uh, store-bought hormones. Why did you grow it? Like a lot of trans guys, growing facial hair has always been one of the primary goals for me going on testosterone. Uh, my first few years on T, I only grew hair on my chin, and I shaved everything else off due to a complicated relationship I was in uh, with somebody who, who did not care for facial hair, and I kind of convinced myself in that process that I wasn't able to grow decent facial hair anyway. Uh, when that relationship ended, I found myself dating somebody who um, who really liked facial hair, so I felt empowered to grow it out more to see what came out, and I found out that I was able to grow more than I thought that I could. Uh, around the time I was growing this, there was actually a movie that came out that featured a handlebar mustache as kind of a plot point. <laughs> And although it was not a good movie by any means, it kind of just reminded me of my art of manliness phase that I went through before going on testosterone. And although I'm not into art of manliness anymore, I do still like a lot of hyper-masculine stylistic choices, and I decided to just retroactively indulge in something I didn't have the opportunity to do when I was going through that phase, and um, see if I could grow one and if I liked it. So I started growing it and training it into a handlebar mustache and I just overall really liked it. Uh, I like the way it looks, which is already enough for me to keep it, uh, but it also is specifically really good for calming my particular brand of dysphoria. Some of my facial features are really hard for me uh, to deal with on a dysphoria level, even after so long on hormones. and It just sort of takes care of that and de-emphasizes those, those facial features. So the beard takes care of my jaw and my chin, and the mustache hides my upper lip and de-emphasizes a lot of the other features I have trouble with, uh, like my nose. And it's also something a lot of cis men can't grow. And although it's a bit problematic, the fact that I have a specifically manly feature that a lot of cis men are envious of is really gratifying for me. Finally, and this might be a very individually me thing, but I have a long history of really having trouble with social connection, especially random contact with people, and extra specially with things like, like dealing with compliments. And having a feature that so many people want to comment on has kind of trained me to respond to stuff like that, like a normal human being, and, and less like a 
goblin that was disturbed from a resting state. Uh, but yeah, that is why I grew it, and that is why I kept it. How did you grow it? I occasionally have people ask how I grew this mustache, and I get the impression a lot of the time what they're looking for is some super secret thing like growth serums or vitamins. A lot of trans men specifically ask if I use minoxidil, uh, and, and the reality is super boring. I went on testosterone, I stopped shaving, and I waited. I did train it by combing it to the sides, but that was really it. Uh, and I didn't take any special beard vitamins or regularly use any oils or serums. I don't use minoxidil on my face because I can't even handle using it on my head. The, the simple story is I just let it grow. So at its most basic, it's just long mustache hair and when I want it to look fancy, I style it up into a curled handlebar. Which brings me to the next question. Does it always look like that? Absolutely not. Uh, if I want it to look like this, I have to uh, take the effort to style it like this and even that is not necessarily Reliable if you watch a lot of my videos You can see that there's a lot of variability in the way my mustache turns out when I style it Sometimes if I haven't trimmed it in a while or if I just don't have the time to Really get it to set uh, it gets a little droopy and um, It might be a bit uneven and, and so forth one of the most obnoxious things that happened to me by the way was that I spent like a week uh, like two years ago, um, training my mustache for a facial hair contest that I had entered, and that whole week I had gotten it just perfect every single day, and then on the day I recorded the actual video for the contest, it just would not cooperate. Um, and I wasn't going to win anyway, I had entered for fun and because the proceeds went to charity, but I really wanted to at least have it be at its best, and it simply wasn't. The, uh, it was just... just the worst. <laughs> and because of the pandemic, I actually rarely style it up into a curled handlebar or anything like that at all, because I'm not going out a lot, and if I do, I'm wearing a mask, which does not go well with a handlebar mustache. So what does it look like if there are no styling products in it? Um, the answer is kind of a, a vaguely Jamie Heineman wrist style handlebar mustache. I do prefer the way that it looks curled up, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to maintain it that way. So I only do it if it's going to be seen or if I'm going to be eating something particularly messy that I don't want to have to bypass a giant mouth curtain. Um, and it's not that big of a deal anymore. I sort of learned how to eat without styling it by pushing it up away from my mouth while I'm eating with my other hand, but it took me years to figure that out. And it also looks really silly to do that in public. Um, my roommate actually recently commented on it when I was eating pizza, uh, how silly it looked. So, um, so those are the times that I, I style it. If I don't, it's basically a walrus Jamie Hyman style handlebar mustache. What do you use to style it? Currently what I use almost exclusively is Got To Be Glued Styling Spiking Glue by Schwarzkopf. Um, the number one styling glue in the US. Uh, I don't know if, it, if this is everywhere, but at least here you can find this at any Walmart. And it's in a way bigger tube than this one. I get the small tube because I, uh, I don't use that much of it. It kind of goes bad before I'm able to use an entire giant tube from Walmart, but I use that in combination with a, a horn mustache comb and a blow dryer. Like I basically just comb uh, the hair glue through it and then hold it the way that I want it while I blow hot air on it with a hair dryer. And I did used to use wax. Um, sometimes I try using it again because I really prefer to be using a natural product that I'm able to make myself. Um, the problem is my mustache is so long and heavy right now that wax just isn't going to cut it. Um, if it's, if there's any warmth at all, which there always is because it's coming off of my face, it just winds up drooping and it just doesn't work. So I need something sturdy to keep it up. Um, and it's also really hard to get wax out of a mustache at the end of the day. And I, I cannot handle the uh, sensory stimuli 
involved with going to sleep with wax in, in my hair. It's just not, not for me. Uh, whereas the gotta be glued Schwarzkopf screaming cold stuff, uh, it just washes out with soap and water. So that's what I use. What are some problems with having a handlebar mustache? So this final section isn't really a question. Um, nobody asks what are some problems with having a handlebar mustache, but it is kind of an amalgamation of problems that have come up with follow-up questions to the other questions. Now, I once watched a documentary on a handlebar mustache club where they basically gave dire warnings about how hard it is for them to maintain these mustaches and how they can't eat ribs or chicken wings anymore and other silly things like this. So, like be forewarned. I do not think it's that serious. If you want to try growing a handlebar mustache and find that it isn't for you and you have a hard time eating ribs, which are your favorite food or something, you can always just stop and shave it off or, or trim it. It's your life. It's fine. It is, however, kind of fun to talk about and a little funny. So I'm going to talk about some of the problems that, that can arise from having a handlebar mustache. First, there are some wicked sensory issues, uh, and they're the biggest pain that I've had to deal with. I've occasionally gone to bed and had to get up in the middle of the night and either wash my mustache out or restyle it because it was poking me uh, in the face, sometimes in the nose. It's actually long enough to get in my eyes. Uh, I'll, I'll post a really gross picture of that. Of, of that, but it's long enough to, to actually like get into my eyes. Um, and although this is mostly, except for the eye part, most of this happened when it was on the shorter side and it doesn't really happen anymore. I've adjusted my behavior to deal with it. Sometimes it still happens and it's pretty irritating. One thing that hasn't gone away but hasn't been that big of a problem for me is what I call the bull riding effect. Um, because of where the mustache curls up into, it, it is always in my field of vision. And it looks kind of like I'm riding a bull that has big horns uh, ahead of me at all times. I don't really have visual sensitivities like that. Basically, it just uh, molds into the background and my brain will cancel it out. But I know that there are some people who have a hard time with like glasses frames and things and if that's you 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 might find that you either either aren't going to be able to deal with having a mustache like this or you'll just have to style it in a way that bypasses that field of vision um i know that sometimes i have styled mine to be straight out and then i i can't see it anymore and when it's down in that walrus jamie heineman style uh, then it's not visible either the next two things haven't been relevant to me pretty much at all, but they're things I know have occurred with other people who have mustaches like these, uh, and, and they're kind of social problems with having it. The reality is that a lot of people just hate handlebar mustaches. It, it might shrink your dating pool a lot uh, if you grow one. Um, and it's, it's a bit because of people's own sensory issues. Some people might have a problem kissing somebody who has a handlebar mustache. Um, I, I've also heard people complain that having one makes you a tryhard or a hipster. I personally haven't had a problem with that, but I was also, if you remember from the beginning of this video, already dating somebody who, who was known to like facial hair. So. That was irrelevant to me, that's why I started growing it to begin with. Um, it is something to keep in mind if uh, if you're single and looking and, um, and are, are worried about that. Another concern might be employment. Uh, I grew mine when I already had a decent job and there were no consequences I'm aware of. Everyone either ignored it or thought it was cool. Uh, when I got laid off during a merger, I did clean the mustache up a lot for interviews. I cut it shorter so that it looked, looked nicer and more professional, but I was able to get a good job with it. Uh, and I, I mean, I may very well have missed out on a job opportunity or two that I wasn't aware was related to the mustache, but I got a new job just fine at a very well-regarded professional company um, with it. This is going to depend on a lot of factors. An established mustache that looks clean 
isn't going to be as much of a hazard as one that um, you're in the first steps of growing where it looks kind of scrubby and, and messy. So if you're between jobs, you might want to wait until you have one secured before you start growing one. Uh, but I personally haven't any, had any problems uh, that I know of. Anyway, that's it for my short mustache FAQ video. Until next time, happy trails.